Anyways, welcome back to another episode of Closer Broke. My name is Kieran. This is BJ, and we're currently on our expedition in the southern areas of the United States. Currently in Dallas, still at the uh, apartment we saw us at last. But we're currently on our way to Windstar in Oklahoma. Don't know the city. I just know that it's like an hour and a half away, or a little less. So, we're going to go check it out, man. The point of this is being a little adventurous, so let's go ahead and do just that. Hopefully, we run a little better than the last vlog you guys seen. Oh, it's you guys there. Forgive me for the interruption. This is the worst part of the video, I know, but it's really important to let this come out to let some people know that don't know already. We're going to be doing the backing for one of you lucky folks. The link will be in the description. It's the easiest way to enter. We're going to be providing a beautiful stay, a tournament ticket to the reunion event, as well as airfare for one of you lucky folks. So again, link in the description to learn about that a little more. It's the best you can do. There's only like 12 people signed up right now. Secondly, the most important thing I think that's come to date for me, the most important and powerful thing is we're going to be hosting our very first meetup event July 16th in Los Angeles, California. We're still working out the kinks with a couple of different uh, casinos, but the gist of it is the most important thing is July 16th in Los Angeles, California at one of these lovely casinos. So book your stays. Get all that situated now. Make the time off if you guys can. That's going to be on a Friday. Well, anyways, let's get back to the video. Finally made it to Windstar World Casino and this place is like the adult Six Flags. It is insanely huge and kind of hard to work through. We're gonna see how it goes. I mean, this is insane. This is the biggest casino I've ever been at, I think, in the outside of Nevada. It is ginormous. I don't even know where to start, but we'll see how it goes. Sheesh. So in the first hand of note, it is almost like tradition. We pick up a pretty decent hand here early in the session. The low jack opens to $20. We're in the 5-2 game here at the Windstar, of course. The gentleman directly to his left in the high jack decides to make it $80 to go. We look down at our hand here in the cutoff and see ace-king. Uh, doesn't get much prettier than that, I don't think. And after a little bit of thinking, we're just trying to pick a decent sizing. Uh, we're into this game for $1,300. Uh, and we currently are sitting at about $900 effective, if I'm not mistaken. After a little bit of pondering, I think the perfect size here is definitely to size up and try to get stacks in. The two gentlemen to my right do have me covered, as well as a couple players behind me are actually a little bit of shorter stack. I go ahead and make it 325. Again, wanting to size up here and get most of my stack in pre-flop to leave a really perfect stack to pot ratio on the flop for a jam. To my surprise, the action player to my left, and at the time it was a surprise because I didn't realize he was such an action player, thinks about it for quite some time and decides on calling. He has 325 right in front of him with around $140 behind. Gets back over to me, everyone folds, and obviously for the little bit of chips he has behind, I'm never gonna fold on any flops, so I go ahead and announce that I'm all in blind. He obliges and the dealer throws out the cards. The flop is 7-7-4, seven, seven, rainbow, turn is a 4, and the river is a 5. I announced that I have ace high, and he notifies me that it is indeed good that he was gambling, and he shows us the ace of hearts. So we scoop a pretty massive pot there, uh, well over 150 big blinds pretty early in the session. So the first hand I have for you guys is the king 10 of clubs that we look at on the button. We have about four limpers behind. I decide to raise to a cool $40, which is around a pot size bet. And I like king of 10 clubs here raising. First, we are on the button. That's obviously the best position in poker. Very early in the game, and we kind of want to see what our players are doing, and uh, we want to get involved. And king 10 of clubs is a very strong hand. It's suited, it has a lot of playability. So we get three callers behind, uh, making it around $160. The flop comes eight, seven, four, one club. The first to act bets $60 and it folds around to me. I decide to continue for a few reasons. I think this is a very protective bet. Again, he is calling behind. He's just flatting and he limped. So his range is a little, um, a little skewed towards, you know, connectors, maybe ace eight suited types. 
and top pair types, especially on this board. Um, and then some draws as well. So I decided to call this $60. And on the turn, we get kind of a money card. We get the 10 of diamonds. And the first to act bets $60 again. Now this, you know, I'm not afraid of. I do think about raising it, but then if I'm raising, what hands are really um, calling that are worse than mine? I think calling the $60 again, which is what I see a lot from uh, regular players, you know, doing, you know, same bet kind of scenario, is a little kind of, again, weak, trying to protect their hand, not wanting to get bluffed out. And if I were to raise, Maybe he folds out and, I, and I'm not really getting value from that I could get on the river. So on the turn, we make the call and on the river comes another money card, which is another 10. So on the river, we hit trips. The guy decides to bet 110 bucks, leaving him with about 290 left. And I think for a while, I'm like, you know, can this guy have a straight? Not really. If he were to hit the turn card, making him a straight, it would have led to him making a bigger bet, getting more value. It's a situation where he's trying to protect his hand. He has a very good, strong pair. Maybe we'll put him around your ace eights or even um, pocket pairs. But I think with pocket pairs, uh, it plays out a little bit differently. So I decide to shove for the rest of his 300, trying to get value from his pairs of eights, maybe pocket nines, anything that would call that bet. And I don't think there's a lot that would. He ends up tank folding and we take it down with our trip tens uh, hitting on the river, which is a very uh, fortunate situation. The next hand of note is probably one of the most fun hands of the night. So if you guys like these parts, it was crazy. Nonetheless, seems like the straddle's on in this hand. I'm in middle position. I look down at ace five of clubs, feeling pretty good about the table dynamics. So I'm definitely gonna be opening these suited aces for middle position. We open it up to $30. We get called from the button as well as next to act. And the big blind makes the call as well actually, so we're actually four-handed going to the flop. The flop is king eight five with one club. We flop bottom pair and a backdoor flush draw. Checks over to me. I think a C bet is in order here. This is a range, this is a board that should definitely be favoring my range as a pre-flop aggressor. I go ahead and make it $35 to go. The gentleman to my left snap calls as well as the gentleman on the button. Everyone else folds, and we're on to the turn card. The turn card is the nine of clubs. Probably the best turn card I think I can ask for, at least one of the best. We now improve to a nut flush draw along with our bottom pair. And at this point, I think it's time for me to start representing some strength, as well as building a pot as a semi bluff for when we do get there. I go ahead and bet $125. The gentleman to my left, next to act, the action player we were talking about earlier, decides to make the fold. And again, it's onto the button. Thinks about it for quite some time and decides on a call. We're going to the river here. I'm not sure exactly what hand the, the button has. At this point, I think I'm putting him on a middling pair or a weak top pair, something in that range. And my range to him, I think, consists of good top pairs as well as some straight draws that are still available. And now obviously some backdoor flush draws. The river could not have come more clean than this it is the beautiful five of diamonds. We have found ourselves with trips and the nut kicker on a pretty decent board texture where it's hard for us to really be beaten with the way the betting has gone. At this point, I'm trying to figure out the right price. And I realized that on this river, I think it's pretty nice to be polarized. There's not very many combinations of nutted hands. Obviously, ace five is one of the few and then top set is another hand, a couple of sets, but we are pretty bluff heavy, I think on this river. So I think it's really important to size up really large here. After a bit of thinking, I decided to throw out a $500 bet. So a huge over bet. Again, the point is in the spot, it's not about exactly what you have, but you want to be understanding the fact that on this river, there's going to be times where I'm going to have Jack 10 of clubs and totally brick out on this river. Queen Jack of clubs brick out on this river. Ace 10 of clubs brick out on this river. We, there will be hands that we have as bluffs and we want to know what sizing we choose with those hands. And like I said, we, we want to go really large in this instance. After quite a bit of tanking, and I mean a ton of tanking, I'll speed the clip through here obviously, the opponent does notify me that he wants to make the call. We show over our ace five of clubs. Obviously it's gonna be good here. And he pretty, he's pretty disgruntled to be fair. And he shows his king queen offsuit. So we were right to put him on a um, top pair-ish holding. 
and uh, we were right to uh, bet $500. I'm happy we did that. Obviously, it turned out to be pretty okay in this instance. So that King Ten of Clubs hand was one of our uh, first hands that got us kind of rolling. This next hand was the pocket nines that we had in the hijack. There was a raise of 20 bucks in the under the gun plus three seat and then a low jack call. In the hijack, we find ourselves with the pocket nines and I decide to raise to 110 bucks and we get the two callers initial razor and then the flatter right to my right. The flop comes nine, eight, six with two hearts. The nine being the nine of diamonds and then I have the nine of hearts uh, for a top set. So we have pocket nines and it checks around to me. And I think for a bit, you know, we do not want to scare these guys out of this pot, but we also do want to get value and charge those who are probably getting um, you probably have your A7s, uh, open under straights, maybe even uh, your 10 jacks and stuff like that. So I do decide to make a $120 bet and we get it folded around. I don't think you can be too hard on yourself. I know we didn't get much value with the pocket nines, but there was a lot of money that was put in pre-flop. Under the gun limps, we're playing 2-5 here. I look down at ace jack of clubs. I go ahead and make it $30 as an isolation. The button calls, and the big blind calls, the limper folds, and we're off to a flop three ways. The flop looks pretty good for our range here. It's ace, queen, five, with one club and two spades. Checks over to me. I think a C bet's definitely in order. The sizing is the only thing that we have to be worried about, and I think we want to size up a little bit to charge those flush draws. This is a fairly dynamic board texture, quite a ton for our opponents to have available to them. So we go ahead and bet out $75, and both players, to my surprise, make the call. The turn is probably the craziest, juiciest card that can possibly come. It's the king of clubs. And again, if it wasn't surprising or crazy enough, the small blind decides to lead here for $200. Considering this is a pretty decent sized bet, I uh, don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I'm assuming it's around 60 to 75% pot. There's just no way I can fold with a gut shot, top pair, and a nut flush draw. There's definitely some instances where we can really put the pedal on and with our semi bluff, and considering we're blocking the nut straight, we can turn our hand into a bluff. But again, considering we have so much raw equity in the hand, I don't know if it's necessary at this point. I think just making the calls the best decision here. We call $200, and again, the button decides to call as well. On the river, we're praying for a great card, a club or a tent to bail us out here. Unfortunately, the river comes a six of hearts. We don't improve, and the small blind decides to jam his stack in for about $600, $650. Gets to me. Don't think there's much of a decision here. Just a little bummed out we didn't get there, but obviously we have a fold here with just top pair. And the gentleman to my left on the button decides to make the fold as well. So we'll never know what he had. I don't think he can ever have a bluff there though. Um, he doesn't have a ton of fold equity, so he's gotta have a pretty decent hand. And again, not, besides a miss flush draw, I guess, like maybe jack nine of spades, is the only plausible bluff that I can put in his range. And even then, like, I'm not sure. I don't think he had a bluff, so. Nonetheless, that is uh, an unfortunate big pot that we lose, but there'll be many more to come. So the third hand I have for you guys, uh, we look at pocket aces in the small blind with a bunch of limpers behind, and I decide to raise it to 30 bucks, and we get three callers behind making the pot 120 bucks. Flop comes 964 with two diamonds. I decide to bet 50 bucks. Again, we get two callers behind making this pot. We want to be making sure that we're charging uh, pocket pairs that are higher than uh, the, the nine that's on the board. On the turn comes the deuce. I decide to bet 120 into the $270 pot. The guy okay. to my left, about four guys to my left, to. decides to shove with about 230 bucks. Next guy decides to fold, and I have a $110 call, so I do exactly that. He says, as you can hear in the video, if you call, you're good. And then the river comes a three of diamonds, not completing his flush, but actually completing his straight for pocket fives. He was on a bluff, uh, I guess trying to just, uh, who knows? I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a very tough situation. Yeah. He might have uh, thought that he could get me to fold with only uh, well, the hands 110 good. Yeah. <laughs> call. And uh, you know, he gets lucky and that's okay. But that was kind of actually the start of a bleeding session. Had as high as 800 bucks, winning some very good hands early. And these guys 
were uh, relatively tight players, but they were loose in the sense that they were calling a lot of bets. But yeah, uh, overall we went from 800 to up 250 bucks. A win is a win and I'll take that. Also another win was being able to talk to the locals. Uh, a lot of the guys were from Texas and we had some great conversations about Texas, about the situation in LA and uh, Oklahoma. Thank you uh, so much to Windstar and to the people who were playing at Windstar. It was great to meet you guys, great to talk to you guys. So thank you guys so much, and we're gonna give it back to Kieran for his last hand. By this point of the session, as you guys can see from both of our hand histories, the table dynamics are really fun. The game is fairly soft, but the people are unbelievably kind. And uh, this has to be the most enjoyment I've ever received from playing poker, at least in a long time. I'm under the gun, and I look down at ace-jack offsuit, and I think this is an excellent time to raise it up to $20. There's no straddle on this hand. Next to Ak, which is our favorite action friend that's played like every pot with this almost, yeah. decides to make the call. We get one more player to come along, which is a small blind who likes to make the call as well. The flop is ace, seven, deuce with two spades. We have the jack of spades, so we have a little bit of equity here, but not a board that really favors an under the gun opening range. It checks over to me. I don't think there's much value in betting here all the time. I don't believe in c-betting every time. Uh, it is nice to have this hand as a check back considering our backdoor value. I believe if I had the ace of spades, it'd be a little more easier to make the c-bet. At least then I'd have a backdoor nut, nut flush draw. But I think at this point, making the check and evaluating is the best option. We couldn't have scripted any better. Our action friend decides to bet when his check to him last to act, $45. Small blind folds. And I think here with the ace side, my hand's a little too strong to just fold. He's been, you know, he's an action player. He's here to have a good time. He's doing this with a ton of draws and I don't think there's any problem with that. So I want to defend my hand. I decide to make the call. The turn is, is as gin as it can get, really. It's the ace of diamonds. I check it over to him once again and he decides to bet $60. At this point, I'm putting him on a range that consists of some top pairs that have now turned into second pairs and as well as some wheel aces. So some hands like ace X of spades definitely makes sense for his range. But nonetheless, there's no way I can fold after hitting our gen card, so we make the call. The river comes the three of diamonds, so the flush draw bricks out. Again, I think our hand is just a check call mode. I go ahead and make the check. He decides to bet $120 and not a lot of Hollywood, not much to really uh, go into besides the fact that our hand is definitely gonna be a call here. All of the major draws do break out, the flush draws and the straight draws, so pretty much as easy as it can come here. Make the call. He shows over ace, 10 of clubs, so he had a backdoor club draw and decided to see bet the flop with ace high. Hello, uh, ma'am, are you open? Yes, I am. Wonderful, there you go. Whoop. Right. Be down three spins. Three spins, three spins, three spins, let's go! Oh, no extra oh. jack left. Oh my god, I'm just in there. Last spin, last spin. Up $15 on the free spin. Let's get another free spin. Real. Lock in a free spin. Um, a lot of flowers, whoa! Yeah, we just keep going. Well, 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 pretty crazy fun session there. Uh, definitely a lot of great hands that we talked about. Um, and we're just really happy and thankful that we got to play, as we mentioned quite a bit, one of the coolest tables we've ever sat down and played at. The people were so nice. I cannot stress it enough. It was, it was a wonderful time. And shout out to the, uh, I think we met two vlog watchers. I think it's the first time. I couldn't even imagine that being a thing, just playing casually and people knowing us and Oh, the guy on a red, by the way, to our right knew, knew about the vlog too. He was oh, wearing nice. red. Yeah, so just a big thank you to all who, uh, who said hello and a huge thank you to the staff over at the Windstar. I uh, cannot stress it enough. If you're in Oklahoma, if you're in Dallas, make the effort to get out to the border. There is not a better group of people. And the game is very decent. Like, it's not very reggy. The, there's good action. There's good action. And it's, it's just a good, it's a good time, man. So thank you guys for watching the video. We'll see you guys in the next one, uh, which will be picking up right where we left off, baby, as we uh, close to broke does the southern part of the United States. And, and until the next time, I think that's pretty much it. We'll see you guys soon. Deuces.